Believe in Me, a special program for young people in the Austin area, in 10 elementary schools and high schools, altogether about 15. We're going to learn about this today, and believe you me, it's worth learning about. Stay with us on Austin Faith Dialogue. Austin Faith Dialogue, at the crossroads of religion and life, a series highlighting the cultural and social interactions between the worshiping and religious communities in and around the capital city. Austin Faith Dialogue is brought to you by the Austin Metropolitan Ministries in cooperation with KXAN. Join us now in Austin Faith Dialogue. Hello, I'm Richard Thompson of Austin Metropolitan Ministries welcoming you to this edition of the show. And today we're going to have to do with believing. Believing in me is uh, the whole theme behind a program called Believe in Me. It's reaching uh, some 5,000 students in, uh, well, there are 15 total schools, and I have to tell you about five of these are elementary schools, and there are 10 middle schools that are involved in the metropolitan area. Every year this culminates in a performance at uh, the Performing Arts Center, which this year will be on May the 13th, and we're going to be learning more about that. Believe in Me was honored with the 1995 J.C. Penney Golden Rule Award, and it's been in a particularly creative relationship with the religious community here in the capital city of Texas. We're going to be learning more about this from the Executive Director, Tim Holan, and Artistic Director, Tamara Barrington, Folks, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us on. Yeah, and uh, tell me, uh, Tim, you, you're the executive director. How long the program is going on and how it got started? Well, this is the seventh year for the Believe in Me program here in the Austin area. And in the course of those seven years, we've worked, uh, we've put on stage at Bass Concert Hall over 3,500 children and over 100,000 Austin citizens have seen the Believe in Me children perform throughout Over all the that city. period of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it started here in Austin. Our founder, Susan Overby, was in New York City where she came across the National Dance Institute and a man named Jacques Dumois who started the program in New York uh, some 23 years ago. And when Susan saw the powerful effect that this program was having on the children, she became determined to have it in the Austin area. So Susan, with the help of some of her great friends, set about doing that, and we've had great success ever okay. since. Okay. Is she still around? Oh, yeah. Giving us that support. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, wh where did you come into the act here? Tara? Well, um, exactly through um, National Dance Institute. I worked with National Dance Institute from 1995 to 1997, and I um, trained with Jacques Dumboise, uh -huh. and um, through them I came here to believe in me, actually to train teachers for a year, and I love it so much here that I'm staying. And how long have you longer? been here? For? Since last October. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, you've recommitted. Yes, I have. Well, we won't let her go. Yeah. <laughs> I love and the kids. You're, you're uh, coaching the kids who are going to be doing a show on May the 13th. Yes, we're having a show on May the 13th. It's called Dancing Up a Story mm -hmm. at Bass Concert Hall. Okay, I think we have a little announcement about that. Let's see if we can bring that up and just let uh, just remind us of the, the time and it, it, it says something there, but I can't read it at this distance. Tell me about it. <laughs> well, this year, um, throughout the year, we've been celebrating literature and mm -hmm. bringing works of literature to life. Um, for example, Shakespeare, um, Hans Christian Andersen, Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, lots of different stories. And um, we have original choreography based on these stories. Okay. And the children have read the stories and learned about them and learned about different character traits. That and they're, now they're going to dance through it. them. Yes, okay. exactly. Well, uh, Bass Concert Hall at uh, 7 o'clock p.m. If, if I got that right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's on May the 13th. And we'll actually do two performances in advance of that for the Austin area school children. Oh, really? So we'll have about 5,000 children will come to a 10 o'clock and a 12.30 performance that day. And then the 7 p.m. performance is our big gala. Uh-huh. Okay. All of our parents and uh, supporters through the year uh, come, and of course, you know, the public too. We're on yeah. sale uh, also. You know, I, I've uh, been working with Austin Metropolitan Ministries in various ways, and it was, uh, I think, a couple of years ago. I was at a board meeting, and Wilhelmina Delco came in. Right, she's from, on our advisory board. Yeah, she came in the day after your show and to the board meeting. She said, "This is this is the greatest thing I've ever seen," mm -hmm. and just you know gave it a big, 
big plug, and I hope that, uh, you know, I, I bet you kind of fill the place, don't you? We sure do. We sure do. Uh, and that's, that's a big part of it, you know, is getting that big audience out there for the children. Uh, and no one walks away from there disappointed. Okay. Because it is so beautiful to see, you know, it's sort of the, the creativity that comes out in this performance. It, it is a spiritual event. All right. Uh, when, you, when you just see these children and, and the way they're displaying all okay. of Okay. Well, energy. believing has to do with spirituality, doesn't it? It sure does. Okay. And we're going to touch on that in just a bit. But we need first to look at a, a, a video clip that you brought about how mm -hmm. this is, uh, shows itself. So let's... Uh, is this about the Austin one that we're going to see, or is this particular? Well, well this particular tape shows a little bit of our history. Mm -hmm. And uh, sort of sets up, you know, how we work through the course of the year and some, you know, some of the process involved in succeeding in the end of the year event. Okay. Well, let's, let's take a look at it then. Okay. started this because of uh, an awareness of what the arts can do to open your hearts and minds to possibilities of excellence. Well, I took this job because I had worked with National Dance Institute, and they sort of sent me down here to work with Believe in Me, and it taught me so much. But I think um, mastery and excellence, which is, you know, the core of this program, how do you be tough and love the kids and have um, a bag of magic tricks that they can relate to at the same time. It's a special thing to me. It's, it's the greatest thing that ever happened to me. I do that for a hundred people. I can act for a million people. I can act for you. A child will define dance as not standing still. But when we give them that opportunity to not stand still, there are. We have, we have their attention. Believe in Me is an exceptional educational tool because the children love to be involved in Believe in Me. The children give 100% of their energy, 100% of the time, while they're involved in the Believe in Me class. I've been so convinced that children are neat people and that, you know, they're no different from adults and all the feelings that they feel and their needs and all that kind of stuff and kids are amazing in their capacity for supporting and caring for each other it's just something that they kind of have to be pointed in that direction so this actually puts into effect many of the things that we say it, this is actually happening the kids don't have positive adult role models. So we have to relate to them on a level that um, is a little different. So we have to be playful and then become those adult role models. Yeah, well, the people who believe me are, are, are my heroes. And I wish a lot of other people I could be Olympic and stuff. But... The process of becoming totally involved and completely dedicated they have a sense of what excellence is all about and that that will transition into their relationship with us as parents and the other children in the neighborhood and their academic performance. So, something I look forward to eagerly. Simply stated, it works. And it's obvious that it works to anyone that sees it. It's really 
important to understand about the Believe in Me program that we spend 36 weeks preparing for the performance at the end of the year. The majority of our expenditures and time are invested in the in-school work, working directly with the students as part of the school day, and also our Saturday program that uh, goes for four hours every Saturday through the school year. The more you let go, the more you see. Coming from a corporate back end, we always have a large interest in the statistical indices of progress. And so we look towards the AISD studies for in-school performance on academics and truancy and advancing to the next grade level. The program really addresses at a much deeper and more fundamental level the progress of the children in becoming adults. And the sense of accomplishment that they take away from the program in self-esteem and responsibility and essentially the realization that they can overcome their environmental situation, that they are not victims of society, that they can create their own future. I like to do dances and when, like, when you're angry, you can, you can dance the anger off. I get to meet a lot of new people with Brandon. Believe Me really does need the financial support of the Austin community. And it's really a good opportunity for the Austin businesses and individuals to get involved in the program because we are poised right now, uh, having done a lot of intense teacher training to expand into a lot of schools. So the, the, the opportunity to make a difference is right in front of us. I think this is a real good program. Okay, you were just talking on the tape there about the financial uh, support uh, for the program. Tell us about how that's done and where you hope to go with that. Well, Believe in Me has been very fortunate to uh, receive a lot of support through some of the Austin corporations. Uh, we've been funded very generously through the Lola Wright Foundation, the RGK Foundation, the City of Austin Arts Commission, and also we now receive funding through the state, through the uh, Safe and Drug Free Schools mm -hmm. Grant Program. Okay. But uh, as we talked about in the tape, we've trained new teachers this year and we have uh, 12 schools that really want the program next year. So we really have to reach out, involve more Austin businesses and more individuals mm -hmm. uh, really need to come to understand the power that this program has as being part of the school day in, in bringing the arts back into the schools as a really effective tool to reach children and impart lessons in character and the importance of the arts. Okay, so <clears throat> if people are watching and they want to lend their support, they can, they can do so individually. And uh, if, I think we've got a uh, uh, on the monitor here, we can put a phone number that people can call you. And I know, Tim, we're going to have uh, one of the participants, uh, celebration dancers, come on in the second half. And right. So, uh, but th here's the number, and if folks want to call you and talk to you, they can. Yes. All right. I want to thank you for being on the show today. Well, Richard, thank you for having us. We really appreciate it. And Tamara, don't go away, because we want you to be on with uh, our next guest. Great, thanks. And you folks stay put, and we'll be right back soon.
going to show us. Welcome back to Austin Faith Dialogue, where today our subject is Believe in Me. It's a wonderful program with uh, young people here in the Austin area, and we've been joined by one of these who is Alton Tisno, a celebration team dancer. Welcome on to the show, Alton. Thanks for having me. And we're welcoming back Tamara Barrington, the artistic director. And um, as uh, you were coming on to the program, I see you've got this T-shirt on, Alton. Mm -hmm. Believe in Me t-shirt. Mm -hmm, from last year. And how long, how many years have you been doing this? For five years. You're not tired of it? <laughs> I mean, uh, why, why do you keep coming back and doing it every year? Well, um, first, when, when you first get in it, before, I, I've, I've never heard of Believe in Me um, in 93. Uh -huh. And the more you keep going and the more you experience things with it, it just makes you want to come back. I see. Uh -huh. So it... Uh, it's something that uh, just kind of carries over from one year to the next, and you're still as enthusiastic about it as ever, mm -hmm. more so. Now, you're going you're to be doing a part in this show on May the 13th, mm -hmm. right? But what's the part you're going to be doing? Um, I'll be playing the sorcerer on the um, Sorcerer's Apprentice. Yeah. Okay. That's one of the ten stories you were talking yes. about. Yes. Uh, you're, you're kind of a magician, right? Mm-hmm. And, and you dance the part? Yeah. I, I, we don't have room here for you to dance it. I'm sorry. So we're going to have to come on May the 13th to see you do that, right? Okay. Okay. Now, you're, you're, you've, have you taught him everything, all of his moves? Not for Sorcerer's Apprentice. Um, we have another choreographer that's choreographing that, but I've choreographed some of the other pieces for the other dancers. I see. Yes. Have you, but have you seen uh, Alton dance? Oh, yes. He's a star. Is he really? He's fantastic. I mean, is it tap dancing? Is it ballet? What kind of dancing is it? Um, it's kind of um, ancient dances. What kind again? Ancient. Ancient dances? Mm -hmm. Really? It's a little bit of everything. Um, you could call it theater dance. Uh -huh. We do some things um, similar to modern dance, some things similar to what you would see in a Broadway show. Mm -hmm. And then another dance, Jabberwock, we do a little tap dancing. Yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is another story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, now there, there are ten stories all together, and you're, you're in at least a couple of them? Mm-hmm. Two. And uh, and some of this you do by yourself, and some you do with a group. Mm -hmm. This this one I do with the celebration, rest of the celebration team members, and and the SWAT team members. SWAT team. Mm -hmm. They're they're um they're the advanced team. They're but they're younger. And I the see. celebration team are older. Okay, now I'm I'm trying to get a fix here uh, about the range of young people. Right, we work with nine to fifteen year olds. Okay. And um, the SWAT team that Alton was talking about is our super wonderful advanced team. And those kids come from the schools that we work with throughout the year. I see. And then they can graduate and stay until they're 15 um, and be on the celebration team. I see. So. How old are you, Alton? I'm 13. Well, you got another couple of years you could do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, what school do you go to? Pierce Middle School. Okay. Now, are, are, you, are there other uh, of your fellow students who are in the Believe in Me program? Uh-huh. One student. Just one other? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, that's interesting because that says to me that you're just drawing from different schools and put them all together, and you don't know these kids from other schools necessarily when you start, right? Right. So you get to kind of... Some of them uh -huh. from the other years before. Yeah, ones that you've known before. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. But you make new friends that way. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Now, before the show, uh, you said something about the fact that this, uh, this activity, this dancing, the stuff that you have fun with, also helps you in school and in your life in other ways. You said that. Mm -hmm. Say it again. Well, it helps me because um, it makes you try harder. I mean, you want to, like, reach your goals. Like, not only it... It's, it's hard work, but if you try to, um, the teachers teach you the steps and you want to learn them. So in school, mm -hmm. you want to like make better grades. You want to try to get up to A's. I see. Mm -hmm. So in other words, the excellence that you are looking for in your dancing in this program, this Believe in Me program, it carries over mm -hmm. into wanting to do well otherwise. Exactly. You know, what it is, I think, is that we expect 
kids to be excellent because we know they can be excellent. Yeah. And that transfers to everything they do in their life. I see. And dance is really perfect because um, it requires you to be absolutely present in the moment when you work because you're, you know, you're an open book. If you cheat, everyone can see. Yeah. If you don't know your yeah. steps, everyone can see. Yeah. So that easily transfers to your schoolwork. You know the uh, cartoon Peanuts? Snoopy? The, the uh -huh. dog Snoopy? Uh -huh. And he's always dancing? Uh -huh. And I remember reading once, it says, uh, do you dance to live or live to dance? Mm. In other words, you can get so into it and enjoy it so much that that becomes not just good exercise, but it becomes one of the purposes of your life. Mm. I mean, you, you really enjoy it, too. Mm -hmm. But you keep on doing it, even maybe if you weren't in this, uh, this program in some way. Yeah. And what about believing in, uh, you know, do kids get to believe in themselves more as a result of this? I hope so. More confidence, that sort of thing? I really hope so. Um, I've seen so many kids just um, metamorphosize throughout the year. They come in um, at the beginning of the year and they're very shy or disruptive. And now at this time in the year, they're very focused and work very hard and have made new friends and have confidence in themselves. Uh -huh. And, you know, uh, I, I have, was mentioning the fact that the J.C. Penney Company had given you some kind of award. and. Something about attorneys general, as you mm -hmm. said, had given you. What, what was that about? We received the award, the award from the National Attorneys General um, for the best crime prevention program in the United States. Uh huh. So. As, as a crime prevention. Yes, program. absolutely, mm -hmm. and the, that's really what we are as a prevention program in many aspects. Um, we reach kids at a really formative age. I see. And hopefully, they begin to make good choices in their life after that. And somebody else gave you an award. I'm trying to, oh, the President's Council. What was that? Mm, I don't know. Some for don't the really arts. Uh, I think, uh, I know Tim was telling me about that, that the mm -hmm. President's Council for the Humanities and the Arts had okay. uh, recognized. Maybe that was before I came. Well, maybe so. You've only been here a yes, year. Yes, I've only been here a year. Okay. Now, as far as awards go, at the end of this, you know, on May the 13th, you're going to be up there dancing, right? Mm hmm. And you're going to come out and you're going to get applause. Mm -hmm. oh, you, you hope you get applause. A standing ovation. A standing ovation. Has he gotten a standing ovation before? Sure. Yeah. Really? Well, that, that feels good, I bet. I mean, that affirms the fact that you're talented and uh, you can do it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I, was, uh, I think we need to just remind, in case people just tuned in about uh, the, the little uh, information we had earlier in the show, let's bring that up again. And uh, that it's at Bass Concert Hall at 7 o'clock on, on the 13th. Now, you think, you're, you think your family's going to come? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, you, you'll see some relatives out there? Yeah. I'll bet there are a lot of relatives at this, uh, I mean. Absolutely. And Absolutely. They, uh, they support you in that regard. Now, let's talk, let's talk religion a little bit. This is Austin Faith Dialogue. We are uh, under the sponsorship of Austin Metropolitan Ministries. Now, you've got a religious connection of some sort. Sure. We um, absolutely love to perform, take our kids to many different venues. And we um, recently performed for the High and Lifted Up production at Houston Tillotson College, which was a production of gospel music. And we danced the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Oh, really? Were you in that? Mm -hmm. Or at Houston Tillotson College? Mm -hmm. I played on um, the role of King Nebuchadnezzar. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're playing sorcerers and kings. I mean, you're always in the leadership <laughs> roles here. Yeah, well, that's... Uh, I bet, you, uh, I bet you're a good leader otherwise, so that's Definitely. good. Now, uh, where else did you, you said you performed elsewhere? Um, on May 9th at yes. um, the Austin Convention, um, Heart of Business Convention, uh -huh. which is um, about spirituality and creativity in the workplace. I see. Now that, uh, by the time this show's air, you will have done that. Yes. And you'll, have re you'll be receiving rave reviews even as this show airs. I certainly hope so. Okay. And then, uh, uh, oh, I know Tim said something about River Bend. We've been invited to dance at River Bend Baptist Church, yes. And when is that going to be? Um, I don't think the date's been set yet. I see, okay. But we love invitations. In other words, what, what we're saying here is that if people are looking in mm -hmm. and they'd like to have a Believe in Me group come, yes. you'd go. Yes, absolutely. And we would love <clears throat> for people to come and volunteer and work with our kids. Any time we have oh, really? um, a need for volunteers at our shows and, and lots of different things. And if they, I think if they come to watch a class, they'll be hooked. Mm -hmm. where, where do you, where, you, you rehearse at schools? <coughs> yes. 
Yes, we go into the schools and rehearse. Uh -huh. On Saturdays, we rehearse at Houston Tillotson College. I see. So if somebody wanted to come see you rehearse, they could come over there. Mm -hmm. What time do you rehearse? There? 9 o'clock to 1, usually, right now, 9 to 3. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. You're over there on Saturdays from that long? Mm hmm. That's but, a long but time. Real, but it's real fun. You look forward to go. Yeah. I mean, it, it's good exercise, right? You're dancing all the time you're over there. Mm hmm. So uh, I think that's part of it, the physical, mm -hmm. the fact that you put your body into it. Yes. You're not just sitting in class talking about it. You're completely about engaged, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and really it's a very spiritual thing as well because, um, as I said, you have to be present body, mind, and spirit, and there's an emotional um, aspect that goes into everything you perform, mm -hmm. and certainly an amount of faith that you will be able to perform in front of those lights and all those people. Well, you know, I, I think that <clears throat> of all the things that we've talked about, that's the thing that I'm carrying away mm -hmm. with me is the fact that this is a spiritual kind of thing you're up to and that, uh, that it has to do with your self-confidence mm -hmm. and it has to do with working with people. You can't do this by yourself. It's a team sort of. You are a celebration team member. Yes. And if you just decided to go do your own thing and ignore the other people, it wouldn't work too well. So you're learning to, to work cooperatively, and um, and that I bet that carries over too, like in school and mm -hmm. other parts of your life. Willing to work with people. Yeah, you go to a church. Uh huh. Which church are you in? Mount Sinai Baptist Church. Have they ever asked you to dance over there? No. They haven't. Maybe they don't know that you dance. Well, now if they're looking in on this, maybe that'll give them an idea. See, because yeah. in the Old Testament it said David, King, a king, by the way, King David danced in front of the ark. And maybe some Sunday you could come down the aisle dancing in front of an ark or something. But I, I don't want to get you in trouble. <laughs> but it's just an idea. Because, you know, there is liturgical dance. Oh, absolutely. Have you ever done that? Um, a, a few pieces, yes. A long time ago. I was about 12. Uh-huh. In a church? Yes. You danced in church? Yes. <clears throat> some churches don't like dancing, you know. Yes, that's, that's true. But uh, it, it can be a, a form of worship. And um, you were in New York. Mm-hmm. What did you do there? I worked with National Dance Institute. Oh, and, and then uh, that's how the idea came to Austin. You exactly. came with the idea. That's exactly. right. Okay. And where do you want to keep dancing the rest of your life? Oh, absolutely. And it's teaching like it? food for me. Really? Yeah. It's a spiritual yeah. thing for you as well? Yes. Okay. Well, listen, folks, you've just been great. Alton, congratulations Thank on you. your accomplishment. Look forward to seeing you on the 13th of May. And, and to you, Thank you for coming Thank to Austin and staying here. And hope you stay for a long time. Thank you. And uh, we want to thank Andrea and, and Alton and also Tim, who was with us in the first half. And thank you folks for looking in. Be sure and join us next week on Austin Faith Dialogue. I'm Richard Thompson on behalf of Austin Metropolitan Ministries, wishing you peace and good day. <laughs>